slope intercept form. So in order to write this in slope intercept form, you need to get y by itself. So we'll subtract x from both sides. We have 6y equals negative x plus 30. Dividing by 6 on both sides gives us y equals negative 1, 6. So I think this is a negative 1 here. We're dividing it by 6. Negative 1, 6, x plus 30 divided by 6 is 5. So we have our first equation. Our second equation we have rewritten. I'll even put it in a different color so you can see this is the, the two equations that we were given to start with. Okay, so our first equation, we wrote the second equation, and what do you notice when we have rewritten the second equation? It's pretty? It's the same exact thing. Exactly. Everything's the same. If everything's the same, then, well, everything about the equations is going to be the same. The solutions are going to be the same. The graphs are going to be the same. The points on the graphs, the negative graphs, they're all going to be the same. Everything's the same, right? So if everything about the equations is identical, they're exactly the same, what do we say about the solutions? Right. So we have the same solutions that me and, and what we're looking for, if you recall, we're looking for a solution that works in both of the equations. An x and a y that works in both of the equations. But since they're identical, any x and y pair, uh, they come in specific pairs, right? A specific x which goes with a specific y. But if you find one of those pairs for this equation, it will work in this equation because it's the exact same equation. Uh, put it another way, if we look at the graph. What would you say about the graphs? Is it a line? Is there one with one line? Yeah, we graph. Even if we bother to draw this like two lines, we just see one line because the first line would kind of disguise the second line. It would hide the other line because then one line would be on top of the other. Okay. And uh, that would look like this: three, four, five. A y-intercept of five. A slope of negative one sixth. So it's going to go. To the right six, two, three, four, five, six, and down one, and that will be that. There's the line, and well, I just did that for the first equation. I did the exact same thing for the second equation, and I graphed the same line twice, so that they have all the same solutions. Number thirteen. The second equation has a parentheses here. We'll decide what we're going to do with those. Okay, what do we want to do about the parentheses part of that second equation? John? Distribute. Distribute. What is that? A safe option. What's 2 times 0.5? One, two times one half, like two halves is one. So that's a one x, and then two times a negative y, a negative two y equals four point six. So, and I'll just take this equation and rewrite it down here: negative two x plus y equals one point three. Oh, sorry, you said three x. You said three x. Oh, and I wrote two x. Negative two x. Is that better? Yeah. No, that's right. Okay. All right, so now we have two equations. Well, it's got some decimals on the other side, but it's not really a big deal. We're really just trying to cancel things out on the left side, whatever happens on the right side, or just do whatever happens. So what do you say? What should we do to solve this system of equations? Trying to get something to cancel out, Sean? Um, multiply the bottom equation by two. By two, so we got a positive two y. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Sounds good. That should work. So multiply by two in the bottom equation. We get x minus two y equals four point six. We get negative four x plus two y equals this times two would be two point six. Okay. Yeah, and together we get uh, x minus four x is negative three x. On the other side, we get 4.6 plus 2.6 is 4.56, and I'm going to get a carry over there, 7.2. Mm -hmm. 7 so we're going to divide by negative 3, and x is going to be negative. Divide that by 3. x 
x is negative 2.4, and now we need to figure out what y is. Um, maybe use this equation here before we multiply by 2, just because there's a y right there. That seems pretty easy to solve for. Um, Negative 2 times negative 2.4 plus y equals 1.3. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2.4 is 4.8 plus y equals 1.3. Subtract 4.8 and y equals negative uh, 3.5. Let's check. Negative 2.4 yeah. So our solution. Negative 2.4, negative 3.5. Okay. Really not a whole lot different about this system of equations. It just requires you to uh, not be intimidated by decimals, pretty much. And then you got it. Any questions? That all makes sense? Pretty cool. All right. Uh, next, uh, we move on to 16. A system of linear equations has a slope of negative 3, so it must be possible to write that as y equals negative 3x plus uh, something. I don't know what that number is. So we don't know like what the y-intercept of that graph is. But the sentence it starts with, or, or yeah, the whole sentence says one equation of a system of linear equations has a slope of negative 3. So there we go. It's got to be looking like that. The other equation has a slope of 4, so it must look like y equals 4x plus, again, we don't know what goes here. There's kind of a fog covering the, the, the number that would go there. How many solutions does the system have? How many solutions does the system have? How many solutions could it have? Let's go over how many solutions it could have, Johnny. Could have one. Cadence? Could have zero. Could have zero. Ready? Could have infinite. Any other options? Could it have two? No. If you answered yes you, and you said, yeah, it could have two solutions, well, it did have two solutions, then how many solutions would it actually have? Infinite. infinite right? It has two, it has infinite. The only way for it to have two is for the, both the lines to be the same and, well, the, they have all the solutions. Or have a curve. Mm -hmm. Or have a curve. Yeah, you'd have to have a curve. Yeah. Uh, but the only things that we can say, like, this has a slope of this, right? Uh, definitively, it has this slope, uh, is, is a line. Only a line has, a, has the same slope all the time. Curves have slopes, but they change. Right? This, this guy here, I can look at this part right here, and I could zoom in super duper far on that little piece right there, and it would start to look like it's about that, about that sloped. That's way in your future. That's calculus. Talking about what's the slope of a curve at this one little point. But as soon as you move over to the next point, the slope is just a little bit different, right? So these must be straight lines. If they're straight lines, one has a slope of negative three, one has a slope of four. What do you think? Do they have no solutions, do you think? No. no not no solutions. Why not? Because they have different slopes, so they may intersect. Okay. So they're going to uh, not be parallel. They're going to be intersecting. They don't have the same slope, yeah. right? So uh, uh, since they don't have the same slope, they must not have no solution. Okay. Ready? They only have one solution. And why not that? Because they don't have the same slope. They don't have the same intercepts. Or both of them have the same slope. Does it matter if they have the same intercept? No, in fact, if they had the same intercept, well, that would just be where the solution is, right? That would, you would know where they cross. They're going to cross somewhere. We don't know where, but since they have different slopes, they're definitely going to cross somewhere. Maybe if they have crazy different y-intercepts, one's like 100, one's like negative a million, they're going to cross way over here somewhere, right? Or maybe way over there somewhere, but somewhere they're going to cross. So they definitely have a solution somewhere. 
We just don't, we'll never know what it is because we don't know the rest of the information. Okay. But that reasoning is good, one solution only. Okay. Got it, Ross. Right. You guys ready to bring back all this knowledge from Thursday? Yep. Maybe a little bit on Friday and, and show me how to find the solutions, including ones that might be infinite or no solutions. Sounds promising. So for this first one, we figure a way to cancel out the x's or y's, right? So I'll have it. Divide into that. Um, I divided by the top by negative three. So you divided this by negative three. So you divided or multiplied this one by? Divided. Okay, so you divided this one by negative 3. And so that gave you negative 2x. Divide this by negative 3, you get negative 4y. Divide by negative 3, you get negative 6. So what do you do with this one? Multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. So you get 8x plus 16y equals 24. Oh, I divided it by two. Okay, I, I thought that might have been it. So divided it by two. This is pretty creative. Not anything that I really covered. So, um, so you divide this by two, you get two x. Divide this by two, you get four y. Divide this by two, you get six. Okay. And we add these together, right? What happens? Oh, zero. Zero. So what is our answer when we, if somebody asks us what's the, what's the solution here? Infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Johnny? I just multiplied the bottom equation by 1.5. Okay, so there's another kind of creative answer. Uh, multiply by what? May, a negative 1.5, right? Yeah. So uh, negative 1.5, so this is going to turn out to be a uh, negative 6 and a negative 12 and a negative 18. And uh, either way, we get them uh, to be you know, the x and y to the opposites. You get zero equals zero as well, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, also, probably, I think maybe probably a pretty common thing to do would be to multiply this one by like two, this one by negative three. Okay. So there's a good way to go too. Uh, I think years of of habit. For me, that's probably what I would do. Two and negative three, negative two and, and three. Um, but 1.5, pretty slick. Dividing both sides, thinking outside the box there, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, this next one. So what do we do? This is number two. What do we do to get these somehow to the x's or y's cancel that one? Multiply the bottom one by three. Okay. Uh, so we'll get a three y. So we get two x minus three y equals negative one. Multiply the second equation by three, we get negative or sorry, not negative nine x plus three y equals forty five. And adding them together, we get eleven x. No more y's are left. 44 there, divide by 11, x is 4. Okay, x is 4, let's use this equation before we multiply by 3 in order to figure out what y is. 3 times 4 plus y equals 15. So we're going to subtract 12 and subtract 12 and y is going to be 3. So we have the solution for So some of you get, you know, didn't get this solution, and I imagine it's just some small arithmetic error. You just gotta watch yourselves with, you know, sometimes you forget to multiply the right side of the equation by three, or you forget to multiply the y by three for some reason. You just kind of uh, space it out. So uh, just watch out for that. But the most part seems to be going well. Okay. Um, yesterday I uh, left you with a task. And uh, just from studying through the sheets that you handed back to the sub, it seemed like quite a few of you did well. Um, but let's go over it together now. And uh, 
you know, and in more detail so we can understand exactly what is happening. So let's take our notes and uh, start on systems of inequalities. We're going to talk about how many solutions they can have. Uh, you know, what a super reminder of uh, graphing inequalities into variables. So this. So we have two inequalities, you know what, uh, uh, color coding is going to be a helpful thing here. If you have the ability to color code your notes, it wouldn't be a bad idea, so I'll do red and blue. Uh, so the red one, we're going to graph this inequality, remember it comes in two parts. Okay, what's one of those two parts of, of graphing an inequality? Yeah. The line, which is going to be either dotted or solid, and that line is all, has a bunch of points. They're all the points that do what to this inequality? Well, well, all of the points that we graph, the line and the blacked out half, that could be said of those points, right? They're going to make the inequality true. But specifically, the points from the line, what do the points from the line do to this inequality? John? They simplify it to make it true. So if you plug in a y and an x, then uh. they would make both be true, so it's true. Okay. Like I said, that's going to be true for any of the, the points that we graph, whether it be the line or the shaded in part. Okay. But the part the, there's that's why we concentrate on these two parts. There's the line part, and then there's the blacked out half of the plane. When we look at just the line, the points from the line do something very specific to both sides of the inequality. Brady? Can you kind of draw a border between the points that work? Yeah, we're talking, you're talking about like the picture. It does do that. It does kind of draw a border between the, the blacked out half and the not blacked out half. Uh, but it does, when we take a point from the line, pl plug that x and y into the inequality, it does something really specific that the other points don't do. It makes the two sides equal. Right, oh. okay, so it, so this inequality, this red one in particular, can be true in two ways, if both sides are the same, or if the right side is bigger. If the left side's smaller, it's the same thing. Right, so the, the points on the line are the points of, uh, that, that have x and y that make both sides equal. And that's why sometimes it's done and sometimes it's not, because sometimes it's okay for both sides to be equal and sometimes it's not. Uh, and the, so the second part is the blacked out half. The blacked out half is the other. So what, is the black, what are the points from the blacked out half do then? Ready? They make it true so the inequality would be less than. Right. They make it true in, 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 uh, in the in unequal way, right? The line makes it true if it's okay for both sides to be equal, because that's what the, the, the points of the line are going to do, make the both sides equal. And the blacked out half is where both sides are not equal. And of course, the y side could be, you know, if both sides are going to be not equal, then the y side could be less, the y side could be greater. We want it to be less, right? So those are our points. Our points are the ones that make the, the y side less. Okay, so we start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start with the line, that border, right? It's good to know where the border is before you start blacking out half of the plane. It's got a y-intercept of negative five, a slope of negative two-thirds, so it's gonna go down two and the right three. That's a negative slope. And when I draw this, I'm gonna have what kind of a line? Uh, negative. Yeah. I have a negative slope. Right, I'm asking because there's two solid different line. right two different lines we use a solid and a dotted. We're going to use a solid line because if both sides are equal, that makes us happy. That's okay. All right, so we're going to graph this. We're going to try and I uh, tried to make this a red line. All 
right, so there's our, we're like one quarter of the way done with this problem uh, because we've drawn the first half of uh, the first equation. So now we have to figure out which side is shaded. So we need to tell me how to figure that out. Why is that? Less than. Because y is less than, y is up and down, right? If I'm up and down, if I'm in that orientation, then the less than things that I, I want to find things that are less, I go down. Y is less than, Y is vertical, right? Up and down things. Okay. This would be where I would find bigger things, greater things, more, okay? This is where I would find smaller things, lesser things, right. down here. So I'm gonna shade this, I'm gonna shade it in a, a well, I'll shade it with, with red. If you don't have a color pencils or something handy, then uh, I'm going to choose like a pattern to do this, like a crisscross pattern or like vertical lines like this to shade it in. Okay, it's going to be important in a second. So next we move on to the second equality. Got a y-intercept of 2, slope of positive 3, so uh, to the right 1 and up 3. We're going to graph this in blue now. Uh, what kind of line should I use? Yeah? Dotted line. I actually have dotted lines over here. One intercept of two, slope of three. There we go. Other side of this line, like that. Okay. And uh, we're going to. Which direction do we shade? We shade above it or below it? Johnny? Above it. Shade above it because y is on the greater side, right? And if we're talking about vertical, which y is, then the greater, the bigger numbers, they're up, right? They go up to find big numbers. So we're going to up above the points on the line. When I shade in this half, okay, you got two things going on. You got the, the, the red inequality and the blue inequality. Okay? For the red inequality, any point that comes off of this line makes both sides equal, which is cool. I mean, we know that already because it's a solid line. Uh, if we pick a point from this red blacked out area, so that's cool too, because that's going to make the y side less than this side. For the blue one, uh, as we've stated many times, like any point from the, the blue graph. If you plug that x and y into the blue inequality, it's going to make it true, right? In this case, the y side will be strictly greater than, never equal to, the other side. Right? That's why that line is dotted, because we don't ever want those sides to be uh, equal. All right? So if I want to find an x and a y that work in both inequalities, where am I going to look? Great. Um. Where they mix together. They mix together, yeah. Because those are, right, each shaded part and, and the lines themselves are a collection of points. Okay? The points whose x and y work in their respective inequalities. Okay? So this point works for the blue inequality, but not the red, right? Because it's not part of the red graph. This point works for the red inequality, because it's in the red shaded area. But it doesn't work for the blue. Also, this point here that's on the line works for the red inequality, but not for the blue. It's not part of the blue graph. All right. Uh, this point, the all uh, kind of purple, 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 because red and blue make purple. This point right here. What do we know about that point? Better, right? It works with it works with the red because it's in the red graph. It works with the blue. It's in the blue graph. Okay. So any parts that overlap, uh, that works. How about this guy right here? Will this point work for both? Yes. 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 Let's just ask ourselves, is it part of the red graph? Yes. Yes, yes. the solid line means it's OK you know, to use that point. Is it part of the blue graph? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's in the shaded part of the blue graph. OK? What about this guy here? No. Good. Yes. Very quick, very correct. No, because being on the blue line 
means that you're making both sides of the blue inequality be what? Equal. Yeah. Equal. Is that okay? No. No, there's no equal to there. It's not okay. All right? And lastly, how about this one? No. No. Still no, because that's the one that usually tricks people up. It's still on the blue line, which makes both sides of the blue inequality equal, which is not okay. So anytime we're on the blue line, no. Anytime we're in the red area, but not the blue, no. But anytime we're in the intersection of the red and blue graphs in some way, we have a solution. How many solutions are there? Infinite. Let's talk about what, how many solutions two inequalities could have. Could have zero. That's true. How many could it have otherwise? Not infinite. Infinite. Any other options? One. One. You think they, that two inequalities could have one solution? No. no. You, even if they had like the tiniest of overlapping shaded areas, how many points are in the shaded area? Even the smallest one. Infinite. Infinite. Even the, a tiny little shaded area over here can't tell I'm drawing this tiny, tiny triangle. If there was just the smallest shaded area, there's still infinitely many points. It may seem strange. There's infinitely many points in here and also infinitely many points here. Okay, but there are. Um, okay, so there's two options, right? Infinitely many and how many? Zero. Zero. Okay. So if we can graph inequalities in two, two, two variables, then we can draw the two graphs together, right? And they're gonna overlap, right? And if you can draw those, those graphs of inequalities, you can, quote, solve su systems of inequalities, right? Because can I solve this system of inequalities like I can a system of equations? No, because either they're zero or infinite. I'll never get the answer for three, like we did in the, the previous example on the Review. That'll never happen. There's never one point where these these guys intersect. Um, but maybe you don't buy that second that, that second uh, possibility of there being zero solutions. Because hey, there's so many points just shaded all over the place, right? So how can it have no solutions? Can someone describe a graph where there would be no solutions? Well. Okay, so we've got parallel lines. Let's see if I can drop this. Ooh, no, I can't. Um, uh, new, let's grab this guy here, uh, right? And we'll make the other line um, a solid line. There it is. I'll try. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to make you sit here and wait until I draw really good parallel lines. But there they are, two lines we can believe are parallel. What else would we need? Because we have the second part to this, right, Grady? One, two, three. Well, we gotta have a specific, like, we gotta be specific about which one's greater, which one's less, right? The top one to be. Curly. Can't remember. Maya? The dotted line to be greater than right. the solid line to be less than. So this inequality would look something like y is greater than, and this inequality would look something like y is less than or equal to, because right, we got the solid line. Yeah, we have two parallel lines and, and shaded areas going in the opposite direction. There's nowhere that we're going to overlap. Right, make sure the lines stay equally far apart forever and ever and ever. The shaded lines go in opposite directions. There's no way that we have solutions. We have infinitely many and we have zero, and those are our two options. So, if you have a dotted line, it would be zero. Question. What, do, what do you guys think? What if, let me see if I can, maybe I can uh, just grab stuff and move it around here. What Cadence is suggesting is we have this stuff here, right? Uh, I'm going to move this and it's, it's probably not going to overlap just right, but it, it'll, it'll be close enough. Let's, let's pretend. Can we believe those two lines are parallel? Yeah. Okay, 
And not only, no, they're not really parallel, they're the same line, right? Yeah. But, but one's solid and one's dotted, right? And we're looking for the overlap of these two graphs. Do these graphs have any overlap? No. Just one. Yes. Well, the thing is, is the dotted line part of the graph? No. No. The graph is made of points, and we're actually, we're drawing that line so we have a border, but we're not including the points on the line. We're just drawing it purely for border purposes, right? So that's a good, right? That's a good uh, observation. If they overlap, their shaded areas go in opposite directions, but one of them is dotted, there's still no solutions. What we have here is like, basically, the entire plane is shaded in by points, right? The, the bottom half here is owned by the solid line and shaded below. The, uh, the top, right, just the shaded part is owned by that graph. The dotted line is really just the border. Okay. But every single point in that instance would be completely shaded in. There'd be like no blank space. But there'd be no solutions because there'd be no overlap. Okay, give me just a second. Why? Or four, sorry, four point five, not four point six. Okay, pretty short. Six point fourteen.